moving out of halls was quite scary at first, but as long as you follow these steps, it makes it a lot easier. So this is my guide to moving into the private sector in Exeter. There's a few options when looking where to live. You can choose to be a lodger for a host family. These contracts are often a lot shorter, so it's great if you're not staying for the full academic year. The second option is private halls of residence. These are great if you're struggling to find a house. They're very similar to the sort of accommodation you stay in first year, but they're private. And then the third option is to stay in a shared house or flat. This is what I did and I love it. Being in a shared house means you do get to live with your friends, but then it does mean you're gonna have to work out who you're gonna live with. My group of friends came together quite quickly in first year. We all knew we wanted to live with each other. There was actually two groups of us from different halls and we became friends, we merged. From there we kind of knew that we would be the group that were gonna to live together. If you need to find a flatmate, then there's a message board section on the Student Pad website. Before we started looking for houses, we all made sure we got together and decided on a budget. It's really important because you need to know your price range before you start looking for houses. My group of friends came together and we all discussed the maximum amount we were willing to spend each week on a house, which made it a lot easier. We made sure that we only looked at houses that had bills included. I have one flatmate that likes to take very long showers and we kind of wanted to think about that before we went into getting a house. When looking for houses, obviously if you're finding houses closer to the city centre or closer to the university, they're going to be a bit more expensive. We walk a little bit further to uni each day, but it's ended up meaning we could save a lot of money. The best way to look for properties is online. You can use StudentPad to do this. It's really easy to filter by accommodation type, rent price and number of bedrooms. Once you've found some places you like the look of, you can then go and have a look. I think it's really important when you go and look at an accommodation that everyone that's going to be living there goes with you. When you're looking around the house, make sure you check for damage, windows and everything, make sure that they lock properly. If there's anyone in the accommodation you're looking to move into while you're looking around, definitely make sure you talk to them, just so you can have a feel for it. Make sure you ask the landlord any questions you might have while you're there about contract length or if bills are included. Make sure you just know everything you need to know before you leave the house. Also, if you see anything that's damaged or you want fixing before you move in, mention it to the landlord, get it in writing that he'll fix it, just so you know everything will be sorted before you move in. So once you've decided on a house, you'll sign a tenancy agreement. So this is just a legal document to say what your role is and what the landlord's role is in the accommodation. Make sure you read this really, really carefully because it is a legal document and once you've signed it, it's difficult to go back. So just check for contract length and if bills are included and make sure that all the costs and everything is what you're expecting them to be. And if you need any help with the contract or anything accommodation related, you can go to the Students Guild. So that is my guide to moving into the private sector. It can be a little bit daunting at first, but kind of once you've got your head around it and follow these steps, it should be a lot, lot easier. And remember, if you've got any problems or issues, you can always get support from the university as well.